Morning. Well, it's just horrendous, isn't it? I mean, reports of babies being butchered, the best of all does, as we heard the other day, uh, being slaughtered, even Holocaust survivor uh, being murdered. Um, and this isn't just militants or, or gunmen, as I'm seeing it described in some places. You know, call it what it is. This is pure and simple terrorism from Hamas, a prescribed organization, illegal in other words, in this country, uh, who have gone out of their way uh, to cause mayhem and murder uh, in Israel, then we stand for square behind Israel and the Israelis at this time. Like um, in terms of support from the UK, um, you, you know, we, we can see the troops amassing on the border with Gaza. We think that there might be a ground offensive from Israel uh, into there. I mean, what sort of support are they asking for and what are we providing at this point? Well, I've spoken to Israeli ministers uh, over the last uh, day or two and uh, there, uh, obviously, first of all, the first thing says Israel has the perfect right to defend itself against this kind of um, terrorism. Uh, it, we think that uh, that the uh, death toll is about 1,200, many thousands more injured, uh, and the attack was clearly absolutely barbaric uh, in nature. Uh, so they have an absolute right to defend themselves. Uh, we have asked them um, to ask us when they need uh, anything specific. Um, they uh, and th those those conversations are ongoing, um, but uh, you know I think that the the main thing that they need is understanding and support from the rest of the world uh, right now, uh, because what happened was unprecedented uh, and frankly pure evil. Yeah, and, and no one could disagree with that. There have been, though, uh, 900 deaths uh, on the Palestinian side, and we heard from the President of the United States who echoed uh, your sentiments there, a full square support for Israel. But the diplomatic language from him, uh, very carefully spoken about concerns about international law, uh, reports uh, of civilians being used as, as human shields, and there has to be a line, doesn't there, in terms of what sort of um, action we condone as the West, in terms of how that will affect women, children, people who didn't choose or have nothing to do with Hamas. And there are calls as well for a humanitarian corridor. I mean, how concerned are you about the involvement of Palestinians, uh, civilians in all of this? Well, the first thing says, I don't believe that Hamas represent the Palestinian people uh, and um, Hamas behaviour. And we talked about these reports coming out of babies being butchered, people being, bodies being beheaded. Uh, that has no place in the 21st century. Um, that is at a different and completely different uh, moral um, scale to uh, a country defending itself, uh, actually uh, typically trying to give notice uh, before, uh, for example, a building is uh, hit, uh, what they call knock and drop, so there's actually uh, opportunity for people to um, get out. And that is completely different to what these terrorists and Hamas are doing. But the, the responsibility lies fairly and squarely with Hamas in a situation uh, like this. And I don't think there should be any question of trying to make some moral equivalence between um, uh, Israel trying to defend itself and the way that Hamas have gone around uh, butchering uh, people uh, and, uh, and, you know, almost reveling in in uh, murdering festival goers, for example. I think these are two very different things. OK, Mr Shapps, you're in Brussels, and Joseph Borrell, the EU's High Representative for Foreign Affairs, has said that while he agrees with you and Rishi Sunak that the, uh, Israel has the right to defend itself, it has to be done according to the rights of international law and humanitarian law. And specifically there, he's referring to the concept of cutting off the electricity and the water to um, Gaza... Is that the right thing to do? Because um, you are then effectively putting an entire country, including innocent bystanders, under siege. Well, first of all, uh, as I said before, we, we support Israel's uh, right to defend itself. I think that's the first principle. Secondly, you know, these are very early days, and as much as the, the border has only just been uh, resealed, I think in the last 24 hours or so. So, uh, you know, Israel will have needed to have take, uh, taken some steps in order to seal that border. Um, of course, uh, everyone needs to uh, act within um, international law, but I just go back to Hamas and the way that they have behaved uh, and the fact that uh, none of this would be happening uh, had they not uh, broken out and murdered indiscriminately uh, men, women, women and children. And we're not just talking about uh, you know, the IDF, the Israeli defense forces, the army, in other words, we're talking about civilians being deliberately targeted 
uh, and attacked. And I'm confident that uh, Israel will not be involved in doing that kind of thing. Um, can I ask you um, your reaction? I mean, we heard the Foreign Secretary urging Palestinian uh, supporters not to come out or at least to think twice about going out and protesting on British streets. And we saw the Israeli embassy having to be boarded up um, and there were serious concerns uh, about, you know, tensions on the streets of London. I know you're a Jewish man yourself. Uh, what's your own reaction to seeing those sorts of scenes uh, in the UK? Well, I think the, the government wants to do, or the British government wants to do all it can to, to reassure, in particular, uh, the communities in, in Britain, Jewish community, obviously, uh, that uh, the police uh, will take a zero tolerance approach to this. The Home Secretary uh, has been very strong uh, on this subject. And, you know, generally, I have to say, communities by and large uh, get on very well in Britain. It's one of the unique features of, uh, or, or, or impressive features of, of British communal uh, life, uh, and we want it to stay that way. And so we don't want people to be uh, going out and doing things which are blatantly inflammatory. But worse still, uh, remember that uh, Hamas itself is a pr proscribed terrorist organisation in Britain. Now, that means that supporting that terrorist organisation can land you in serious trouble, in including many years in, in jail. Um, so we don't want people to sort of misunderstand and think that that is OK when it is not uh, in Britain. Uh, but uh, of course, you know, as ever, we are the home of free speech, uh, but it should be done in a respectful way. Uh, and that is what we uh, expect of all communities. Well, Mr. Shapps, you, you could definitely argue that it hasn't been done in a respectful way in the United Kingdom. Um, the glorification of what Hamas did has been rife on the streets of London. We have Jewish school children afraid to wear their blazers to school. We have businesses being stoved in. We have anti-Semitic graffiti emerging across the country. Last week, Suella Braverman was saying multiculturalism isn't working in the UK. Are these types of conflicts bringing that into view? We have imported problems on domestic soil. And in France, the cops are going in and they're stopping these protests in their tracks. Why don't we do the same in the UK? Well, I, I, I actually at the COBRA, the emergency meeting uh, on uh, Monday, at the government, I was, uh, Suella Braveman, the, the Home Secretary, was there. And she was very clear with the police also represented there that there should be a zero tolerance approach to this. Now, uh, obviously, the police can't help it when somebody breaks a window, but they can make sure that they go after and prosecute the uh, persecutors uh, of, uh, of, of those sort of uh, activities. And that is what we expect to see happen. Uh, people should know that they cannot go around and do those things. And indeed, can't intimidate other people and intimidate other communities. There's always that fine line between free speech, the ability to say what you think, and uh, things which step over that line and start to intimidate other communities. And the British government is firmly on the side of keeping this civil, asking the police to do their bit, uh, and uh, we'll, con we'll, we'll continue to maintain that. And I have to say, as, as you mentioned, I happen to be Jewish, uh, as well as our Defence Secretary, uh, and I can tell you that the Jewish community has taken a great deal of solace from, for example, the prime minister attending a uh, synagogue, uh, expressing uh, his uh, deep condolences and also making clear from the prime minister, the foreign secretary, uh, the, uh, the home secretary, myself as defense secretary, uh, that our number one priority is to ensure that communities at home do feel safe and make sure that the police do have the powers that they need to follow up. Well, the Prime Minister taking a very strong position on that and indeed on another ongoing conflict uh, that uh, going on between Ukraine and Russia. And that brings me to the reason you are in Brussels this morning uh, and you want to uh, unveil a, a big announcement this morning in terms of further British support. Yeah, that's right. We have a package which is another £100 million, which is sort of British-led support. Uh, and that is in particular to deal with the mines, because Ukraine is now the most mined country in the world. I'm talking about all those mines that have been laid down uh, by Putin's uh, troops um, and uh, other money as well uh, to deal with anti-aircraft uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, missile intrusions and about another £70 million pounds, um, there. But as you say, I'm actually in, in Brussels today to meet with about 50 countries, all of whom sit full square uh, behind Ukraine. And one of the things that we're very determined to do today is ensure that uh, notwithstanding uh, problems elsewhere in the world, and of course, this terrorism, this horrific terrorism in Israel, uh, we will not lose sight of and will not be forgetting what is happening right here 
in mm. Europe. And it would be a massive mistake for Putin to imagine for one moment that the world's attention uh, is in any way distracted. And that should somehow give him a free hand. So we're here, uh, not just, uh, as, as it were, in spirit, meeting each other, but also putting money uh, into the fight to make sure that Putin cannot win this war. Um, really quickly, I, I just want to ask you about uh, Sir Keir Starmer's speech yesterday uh, at the Labour Party conference, making an audacious appeal to blue wall voters, calling for anyone who might feel that the Tories don't uh, work for them anymore. How much of a threat do you think the Labour Party is to some of those people who may be feeling a little bit alienated in recent months and years? Well, I, I'm afraid because I was dealing with the situation both in Israel and Ukraine, I didn't get a chance to watch his um, uh, speech. But what I can say is that uh, when it comes to, uh, I hear there was a bit in there about housing. I used to be a housing minister and I well remember the number of homes built under the last Labour government dropped to the lowest level since 1924. So their record was pretty appalling on that sort of thing. What I heard of the speech sounded like it was more uh, glitter and, uh, and, and glitz than substance.